Hey everyone, welcome to Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're going to be filming episode 4 of Cast Iron Cookware Answers, and we're going to be doing that coming right up. Okay, before we get started, I just want to say if you're new to Cast Iron Cookware, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you'll be informed of new videos when they come out. So if you have any questions about cast iron cookware, leave it in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer those questions on the next answers video. So let's go ahead and get started with our questions. Question number one comes from Rand Rowe and Rand Rowe commented, what was the number threes used for cooking? You know, that is a great question. Now, if you think about it, a number three is not very large. You know, what could you cook? And when cast iron was really popular, families were larger. So what good would a number three do for a large family? Uh, I really don't know. Uh, but I will say this. It makes great cornbread for a couple. And the reason why it works so well is because you have crusty edges. So you can make cornbread in this little number three and you could dump it out and you can cut it in half and you'll have nice crust around half of it. So I think number one, probably used for cornbread. Maybe there was a dish that only one person in the family liked and they'd cook it in this. I really don't know. So I have a question that I want to pose to you. What do you use your number threes for? Me personally, I plan on using my number threes as personal pot pie pans. I also use it for a personal dump cake which is a great dessert, especially if you have a lot of people over and you have somebody may have allergies to maybe apple. So you could do theirs and cherry, somebody else in apple, somebody else in strawberry, whatever. So that's what I use mine for, pot pies and dump cakes. So what do you use your number threes for? I would really like to know. So leave it in the comments. Everybody else would like to know too. So let's get on to question number two. Question number two comes from Teresa S. And I'm going to read this so I get it right. I reworded it just a little bit so the question could come off a little, little shorter. I recently purchased an outer heat ring Wagner pan and noticed after I had a little bit more time to inspect it that it was really sticky. And uh, she said that she went home and she scrubbed it really well. She put it in a vinegar bath for a little bit. Cleaned it up really good and just decided the reason why it was so sticky was because they put a layer of oil on it to keep it from rusting. And the oil got really rancid and sticky and just awful. And she was really worried that maybe there might be some kind of chemical on it that was hazardous to her health. First of all, the only hazardous chemical that I really think about is lead. Most of the time you don't have to worry about lead unless you see signs of it. Most of the time it will be in small muffin pans, corn stick pans, and things like that where people has melted lead to make bullets or sinker weights or things like that. And you'll usually see a discoloration. And usually when I see those, I just pass on them. Don't even consider it because you cannot get rid of lead. Now, if you do pick up a piece and you are worried that it may be lead contaminated, you can pick up a lead surface test kit at Lowe's or Target or somewhere like that for not too awfully much. And, but just remember, if you're doing that and it's seasoned over, so you'll have to take some of that seasoning off. Now you don't want to put it in your electrolysis tank or your lye tank because then if it does have a lead, it will contaminate the rest of your tank. I would probably say use the spray oven cleaner in a bag method. And that way you can clean it up or you can make a personal uh, lye tank with just a little bit of lye and water. But either way, once you get the seasoning off of it, then you can test for lead. I did get a tip from, I believe it was Steel Ringer, one of my subscribers. He said, in order to make a lead test kit last for a while, if you have a lot of skillets that you want to test, use a Q-tip. Put a drop of the lead test solution on a Q-tip and use that. That way you only use one drop per test and you could probably test a lot of pans that way. But just make sure you do it at one time because when you break the vial, that uh, activity is not going to last for very long. If you have a lot of pieces, a Q-tip is the way to go and it makes it go a lot further. But actually, I have tested for lead on a lot of pieces and have never found one to test positive. But if you don't want to go through the process of 
completely restoring a piece, just scrub it really good with an SOS pad till you know you've got it really clean. Rinse it off well. I like to go back with Dawn dish soap just to make sure there's not any little bits of metal left over from the SOS pad. And then apply a layer of seasoning oil of your choice. Wipe off all the excess, stick it in the oven for an hour at 500 degrees, and you should be good. Uh, most of the time it's just old rancid seasoning that has set on there and just got old and cruddy and you want that off. You don't want to use that for your seasonal layer. So clean it off first and you'll be able to use it and you'll be good. Now that was a long answer. Sorry I took up so much time. But question number three. Now this subscriber's name I can't pronounce so I'm just going to spell it. It's N-A-L-O-S-O-L-J-H. Knowledge uh, Jaw. I don't know. Uh, can you use a reverse griddle on a glass top? Will it work okay because there is a gap between the griddle and the heating surface? Now it does make a little bit of a difference if you don't have a good surface uh, connection with your cast iron. But what he is talking about is a griddle. This one has not been seasoned yet, but I believe he's talking about a griddle that has a concave bottom where it doesn't really sit flat on the surface where you don't get good connection. There's a there's an open layer. And that's not really a problem. And like I always say, when you're using cast iron, you don't cut it on wide open to begin with. You cut it on low to medium. You let the pan warm up till you can, you know, tell it is getting hot. And then you can crank your temperature up. Eventually that radiant temperature will go ahead and, and heat your pan. Now you probably won't be able to sear a steak on it because you won't get it that hot. But if you want to sear a steak on a griddle like this, you can put it in the oven and let it go ahead and get to 500 degrees. And then you can sear your steak on it. But yes, it will work on a glass stove top. You just got to let the radiant heat kick in. Good question right there. And actually you can use all your cast iron cookware on a glass top. You just need to be careful not to drop it on it and don't slide it around too much. Other than that, you're fine. I've been using a glass top for a long time and I have been brutal with mine. I'll just be honest with you. Now, me saying how tough it is, I may go in there tonight and try to cook an egg and crack it. But I have been brutal on my cooktop and it has really stood the test of time. Okay, question number three. This one is another question from Rand Rowe. I have a BSR Red Mountain that I have easy off the mess out of three times over nine days and still had some seasoning that I couldn't get off of the edges. The inside came out like glass. Is there any way to get one like that down to bare metal? Now I have been working on the easy off in a bag method and I have learned one thing and I'm not a patient person at all. It takes patience. I see here he said nine days. Now, when one is not too bad cruddy, nine days just might do it. But I had one that was so cruddy, I was planning on doing a video. I sprayed it down really good. I left it in there in the bag outside in the heat for about two weeks. I went out there to check it. It wasn't ready. I rinsed it off. I sprayed it down really good again. I waited another two weeks. I went outside. It wasn't ready. So I went ahead and sprayed it down again, and I pretty much emptied a brand new can of easy off spray oven cleaner and I said I'm just going to leave it and I left it for about probably a month and a half and I went out there and I said this got to be done because I'm out of easy off so I went ahead and got it out of the bag carried it in the kitchen rinsed it down real good and it still had the hard crud around the edges on the bottom kind of close to the heat ring and I just could not get it off I got so disgusted I just decided to put it in my lie tank and just let it eat away because your basic ingredient for easy off spray oven cleaner is lye. And I think maybe it was drying out. And if I probably had went out there every couple of days and give it a spritz, I probably could have kept it moist and it would have worked better. But I believe even in the bag, it wound up drying to the point where the, the lye was not able to work like it ought to. But it is a patient's way to go. And I'm not a patient guy when it comes to stuff like that. I want it and I want it now. So patience is a virtue when it comes to that method and I probably won't be using that method again. Uh, I personally think that it would be just about as easy to get a small container 
that is just large enough for that piece and go ahead and use the lie method. Put a lid on it so no critters can get in it. Put it up out of the way where no kids can bother with it and just let it, let it do its work. Question number five comes from Jan Sushiv. Now it's J-E-N-S-U-E-C-H-I-V. Do I understand you correctly? A little bit of dish soap is okay if removed quickly. And they also commented in a separate comment and I thought it was funny. It says, Kent Rollins would stripe your legs for putting soap on that cast iron, figuratively speaking. And I thought that was funny. I really love Kent Rollins. He is a great cook. I love his videos. You know, but he is not a dish soap type of guy. He says, leave the soap out of it. And I understand for many years, uh, people has, have said to not use dish soap at all on cast iron cookware. And the reason why originally, just like we talked about earlier, the active ingredient in oven spray cleaner is lye. And the active ingredient in a lye tank is lye. And it will eat away the seasoning. Now, if you have soap that has lye in it, which soap used to be made with lye, it will eat away at your seasoning. Now, you don't want that to happen, but soap is not made with lye now. Now, you don't want to put it in the dishwasher. You don't want to leave it soaking in the sink. You want to go ahead and wash it with dish soap and rinse it off well and go ahead and towel dry it. Uh, question number six comes from Nathan Christian. And Nathan Christian commented, when I season my cast iron cookware, I notice that sometimes oil will beat off and not soak in. Sometimes this might be in just one spot. Why does that happen? Now that is the $100,000 question. I see that occasionally. A lot of times I'll season a pan and it just don't want to stick to it. What I'll usually do is I'll just keep going at it and eventually it will stick. It could be something to do with the iron that was in the process. Maybe the mixture wasn't cohesive, uh, for lack of a better word. Who knows? And if you know, please don't be afraid to leave it in the comments. I would love to hear a scientific answer of why that happens. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people who like to hear that too. So if you have the answer to that, please share. And, uh, and if you've had that problem, don't be afraid to comment too, because it is an aggravating thing. You put two or three layers on and it's starting to look nice and you still got these little spots that will not take. You put oil on it, it looks like it just beads right away. So uh, I hope that uh, somebody has an answer there. I've seen that question come up many times in Facebook groups and so far I've not seen a definitive scientific answer. Okay, I said there are six questions and uh, there's also a seventh that is not actually a question. When is the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group going to be open for new members? I admit I set up the Facebook group originally as a private group while I learned how to set it up and kind of get all the rules and things set in. And I had an issue and I thought, well, maybe it's because it's set to private. So I went ahead and set it to public and tried to work out the little issue that I had and said, nope, that's not it. So I switched it back to private. Little did I know that Facebook has a policy that if you switch it from private to public, you have to wait 28 days before you can switch it again. So basically I locked me and everybody else out for 28 days. So hopefully in a few more weeks, Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group will be open to accept membership requests and I would love for you to check it out and uh, become a member. We want to make a Facebook group that is free of drama, which is kind of hard to do on Facebook. But we want to make it free of drama. We want to make it educational. We want to make it fun. We want to make a place where uh, cast iron lovers can connect, you know, share information. Uh, we want educational things on there. Just all kind of neat information when it's unlocked. I do apologize for my issue with that. And I can't wait until we got it open for the public where everybody can be a part. And I just, just can't wait to see what the future holds for Cast Iron Cookware as a Facebook group. I also want to say thank you again for being a part of Cast Iron Cookware and thank you for watching. <music>